Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our Sahaji online class. Dear students, the last week class we studied about two important topics. The first topic is RNA band, and the second topic is properties of genetic material. Okay. So in the last class we studied about the RNA band. This is very important five mark question. And the next five mark question is the properties of genetic material. Okay. So dear students. Mm, hope you all studied these two questions. Yes. Today we are going to study about some more topic. So all these very carefully, my dear students. So the first topic of today's class is packaging of DNA. Okay, packaging of DNA. So in this uh, topic, we are going to study about the structure of DNA molecule. Okay. So listen very carefully. In this topic, we are going to study about the structure of DNA molecules. Okay, dear students. So the first point about this DNA molecule is already in the last class I told you the DNA molecules are made up of base pairs. Okay, nitrogenous base pair is one of the important property of the uh, genetic material. Okay, the adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, these are the nitrogenous base. Okay, so the first point about this DNA is the distance between two nitrogenous base pairs is 0 0.04 nanometer. Okay, 0 0.04 nanometer is the distance between two nitrogenous space. Okay, two nitrogenous space or base pair. Understand of you? Then, second point to find out the length of a DNA molecule, what formula is there? Okay, so if you want to find the length of a DNA molecule in a cell, the number of base pair present in the DNA is multiplied with the distance between the two base pairs okay so to find out the length of a dna molecule we have to multiply the number of base pair with this distance between two base pairs that's one of you so now we study two important points about the dna the first point is the distance between two base pairs is 0 0.34 nanometers the first point and the second point to find out the length of a DNA molecule, the number of base pair is multiplied with the distance between two base pairs. Okay, so it's the second point. The third point in SRCA poly bacteria, if the length of the DNA in SRCA poly bacteria is 1.36 micrometer, means the number of base pair present in that DNA is 4 into 10 raised to 6 meters. Okay, 4 into 6. 10 raised to 6 meters. Listen very carefully. Suppose in SRCA poly bacteria, the length of the DNA molecule is 1.36 nanometer micrometer means the number of base pair present in that DNA is 4 into 10 raised to 10 meter. Understand of you? So hope you are understood this that one. So now we have completed three points about the packaging of DNA. Then next word scientist, his name is Du Prab. Okay, his name is Dupa. See, he only first proposed the single strand model of a DNA molecule. Okay, he only first proposed the single strand. Actually, DNA is a double standard model. Here, this person only first introduced or proposed the single strand model of a DNA molecule. And here, this single strand DNA molecule is closely associated with a protein. Name of the protein is called histone protein. Name of the protein is called histone protein. So once again, repeat this point. Dew probably first proposed the single strand model for a DNA molecule. And according to his model, the DNA molecule, single standard molecule, DNA molecule is closely associated with a protein. Name of the protein is called histone protein. Okay, then the next point actually in plants and animals, okay, plant species and animal species, the number of DNA molecule is more than the bacterial cells. Okay, in plants and animals, the number of DNA molecule is very high than the bacterial cells. Okay, so all these excess over the large number of DNA molecules are folded, then only it can fit inside the chromosome. Okay, then only it can fit inside the nucleus. Right? So, if you understand this point, in plants and animals, the number of DNA is very high than the bacterial cell. So, all the DNA molecules in plants and animals, the DNA molecules are folded many times 
then only it can fit inside the nucleus. Okay, then next part. In SSA poly, there is no nucleus. Okay, there is no nucleus. So the DNA molecule in SSA poly bacteria, the DNA molecule is held with a protein molecule in a region. Name of that region is called nuclear. So inside the bacteria, SSA poly bacteria, one part is our region is there. This region is called nuclear region. In this nuclear region only, the DNA is held with a protein molecule because in this is a polybacteria, there is no nucleus. This is a reason. Okay? So, because of the absence of the nucleus in Sersia polybacteria, in Sersia polybacteria, the, the DNA is scaled with a protein in the nuclear region. Nuclear region. So, have you made students? Yes, students, now we are going to study about one of the very, very important two of question. Genophore. Name of the question is genophore. Here, genophore means maximum in prokaryotic organs. The DNA is circular in shape. The DNA is circular in shape and the chromatin fibers are absent. Okay, chromatin fibers are absent. So this condition is called genophore. This condition is called genophore. So once again repeat the meaning of this word genophore. In prokaryotic organs, the nucleic acid, the DNA is circular in shape. Okay, circular in shape and the chromatin fibers also absent. So this condition is called genophore. Hope you understood this point. Well, next point about this DNA is same. In eukaryotic organs, the chromatin fiber is made up of many repeated units, many repeated subunits. Name of that unit is called nucleosome. Okay, listen very carefully. In eukaryotic organs, the cells consist of many chromatin fibers, and these chromatin fibers are made up of a yeah, repeated subunit or repeated unit that repeated unit name is called nucleosome. That repeated name unit name is called nucleosome. Then what side is his name is Corber. Okay, his name is Corber. He only first proposed the structure of this nucleosome. He only first introduced the structure of this nucleosome. So according to Corber's uh, opinion, the nucleosome model is made up of two molecules of four histone proteins. Two molecules of four histone proteins. So a single histone molecule, sorry, a single nucleosome molecule is made up of eight histone proteins. Eight histone proteins. So listen very carefully. I repeat this point. Paul Murphy first proposed a model for the nucleosome. According to his model, a nucleosome is made up of two molecules of four protein histone proteins. Okay. So, totally 8 crystal proteins are present in a nucleosome. Okay. So, it is called histone atomia. This is called a histone atomia. Understand a few? Understand? Then, actually, the DNA molecule, the next point about this DNA is DNA is a negatively charged molecule. DNA is a negatively charged molecule. This negatively charged DNA molecule is always present or more proud or around the outer surface of the nucleosome. See, just yes, imagine it's a nucleosome. Okay? So the nucleosome, inside the nucleosome, just yes, imagine it's a nucleosome. It is a positively charged molecule. Nucleosome is a positively charged molecule. So here the negative the DNA is a negatively charged molecule. Okay, so the negatively charged DNA molecule is two times more around this nucleosome. Okay, the outer surface of the nucleosome only the DNA molecule is present. So the nucleosome is surrounded by the DNA molecule, and the DNA molecule is a negatively charged molecule, and two times it is surrounded. Okay, the DNA molecule is surrounding two times in a single nucleus. Hope you are this point. Okay, hope you are understood this point. So DNA is a negatively charged molecule. This molecule is two times or two thirds. It is surrounding the outer surface of the nucleosome. Understand of you? Understand of you? Then, in some nucleosome, okay, see, in some nucleus, the nucleosome, the two neighboring or two adjacent nucleosomes are linked with a DNA. This DNA is called linker DNA. Okay, this DNA is called a linker DNA and this linker DNA is otherwise called H1 DNA. The linker DNA is otherwise called H1 DNA. It's very carefully the nucleosome. So just imagine this is one nucleosome, this is the other nucleosome. These two are the neighboring nucleosomes. Okay, 
these two nucleosomes are connected by another one DNA that DNA name is called linker DNA otherwise called H1 DNA otherwise called H1 DNA okay understand the next listen the next point very carefully in some nucleus the linker DNA or the right of DNA is absent okay the linker DNA or the right of the H1 DNA is absent okay so in these type of DNAs the DNA is arranged as a Beards on a string appearance. Beards on a string appearance. So just to imagine the linker protein is absent here. Okay, sorry, the linker uh, DNA is absent in this nucleus. Okay, in some nucleus. So the nucleosomes are arranged as a beards on string appearance. Beards on string appearance means so just to imagine this is one nucleus, this is another nucleus, this is another nucleus. So the DNA is entering inside the nucleosome through one region and coming out through another one region. Okay. Then it is again entering into one in through one region of the next nucleosome and coming outside and again entering and coming outside. Okay. So this appearance is what appearance look like a beard sort string appearance. This appearance is called a beard sort string appearance. So hope you are understood this point. So in some nucleus, the linker DNA or the H1 DNA is absent. So in this condition, the nucleosomes are arranged in a beards on a string appearance. Okay, beards on a string appearance. That means the new DNA is entering through one region of nucleosome and passing to the other region of from the nucleosomes. Understand? Understand? I hope you understood this point. Then the next point, see, actually. The chromatin fiber in the interface of new interface nuclei. Okay, the chromatin fiber in interface nuclei and the mitotic chromosomes. Okay, chromatin fiber in the interface nuclei and the mitotic chromosomes. So in these chromosomes, they have a diameter. Okay, they have a size. Okay, so this diameter is very from 200 to 300 nanometer. Okay, 200 to 300 diameter. So, once I repeat this point, see chromatin fibers in interface nuclei and the mitotic chromosomes have a diameter. That diameter is very from 200 to 300 nanometer. Okay, 200 to 300 nanometer. Understand? Then, the next point is 30 fibers are arising from the folding of a nucleus. Okay, 30 fibers, one more question, 30 fibers are arising from the fold, hmm, folding of a nucleus. Understand of you? Then, it is changed into another more structure. Name of the structure is called solenoid structure. Name of the structure is called a solenoid structure. And this solenoid structure consists of 6 nucleosomes. This solenoid structure consists of 6 nucleosomes. So, once I have this point, 30 fibers arising from the folding of the nucleosome. Okay, into an is converting or it is forming another one structure, this is called a solenoid structure. The solenoid structure consists of six nucleosomes. Hope you understood this point. Then the next point is say maximum the DNA molecule okay, consists of 40 foldings. Okay, in the ordinary DNA molecules consist of 40 foldings. Understand of you? Then to keep or to pack all the chromatin fibers, the DNA molecules need some additional set of proteins. The DNA molecules need some additional set of proteins. That additional set of proteins are non-crystal chromosome proteins. Non-crystal chromosome proteins. So once I repeat this point. To pack all the chromatin fibers, the DNA molecules require or need some additional set of proteins. That proteins are not a histone protein. That proteins are called non-histone chromatin protein. Non-histone chromatin protein. Okay. And the last point about this nucleus, sorry, this DNA is in nucleus, some regions are loosely packed or loosely arranged. That regions are called euchromatin. That regions are called euchromatin. And some regions are tightly packed. That regions are called heterochromatin. And here, this 
Euchromatin is active in condition. Transcriptionally, it is active, but the heterochromatin region in this is in inactive condition. Is in inactive condition. So once again, repeat this last point. In nucleus, some regions of the chromatin fibers are loosely packed. Okay, that regions are called euchromatin, and that region is transcriptionally is active region. But some regions are tightly packed. Okay, some regions are tightly packed. So this region is called heterochromatin region, and these regions are inactive in condition. Understand, my dear students? So hope you all understood this first topic, packaging of DNA. So now we completed the packaging. What are the substances or what are the materials present in the uh, DNA molecule and the uh, length of the DNA molecule? Everything here completed now. Okay. That hope you all understood this topic. And the next topic is. So, dear students, now we are going to study the next topic. Okay, our next topic is DNA replication. Okay, DNA replication. Actually, this replication inside the cell, this DNA replication process is takes place during the yes phase stage. During the yes phase stage. Okay, actually, this uh, replication is a process by which the number of nucleic acid is increased. The DNA molecules are increasing in their number. Okay, so during the replication process, the number of DNA molecules is increased, and this replication process is takes place during the yes phase stage of the cell. Okay, then actually, the replication process is classified into three types. Okay, replication process is classified into three ways. The first one is conservative replication. Okay. Second one is called dispersive replication. And the third one is semi-conservative replication. So the first one is conservative replication. And the second one is dispersive Replication and the third one is semi conservative replication. Okay, so the replication process is divided into three types. The first type is called conservative replication, second type is called uh, dispersive replication, and the third one is called semi conservative replication. So now we are going to study about all these three types of replication methods. Okay, all these three types of replication. Okay. So the first one is conservative replication. Okay. See in this type of replications, first the original double strand DNA molecule is acting as a template strand for the production of new strand. So just to imagine, it's a double strand DNA molecule. This double strand DNA molecule. Act as a parent DNA or act as a template DNA. So this double strand DNA molecule produce two data strands. Okay, or two new DNAs, DNA molecule. Okay, so this type of replication is called conservative replication. So conservative replication meaning so in this type of replication, the original DNA molecule, double strand molecule is acting as a Template and this act, sorry, this template uh, DNA molecule is synthesizing or producing double sorry, new strands, new DNA molecules. Okay, then second one is called dispersive replication. In dispersive replication methods, just imagine the DNA molecule. This DNA molecule is divided into fragments. So just imagine this is one fragment, this is another one fragment. Okay, so here these two fragments are producing two new DNA molecule. Here, the new DNA molecule consists of one old strand and one new strand. Okay, so a single double strand DNA molecule is divided into fragments, and each and every fragments are producing new DNA molecule. Here, the newly produced DNA molecule consists of one old strand and a new strand. 
ओके वा अंडरस्टूड दिस डिस्कसिंग रेप्लिकेशन बताए एंड दैट वुड बी सेमी कंसर्वेटिव रेप्लिकेशन बताए हियर द सेमी कंसर्वेटिव रेप्लिकेशन मेथड वाज फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय टू साइंटिस्ट वाटसन एंड क्रिक ओके इन द ईयर ऑफ 1953 दिस वाटसन एंड क्रिक दीस टू पीपल ओनली एक्सप्लेन द सेमी कंसर्वेटिव रेप्लिकेशंस मेथड ओके सो जस्ट टू इमेजिन is a dna molecule is a double stranded dna molecule okay so in this type of semi conservative replication method first from one end the dna molecules are unbinding or separating okay so actually there is dna is a double stranded one is a spring shaped model okay so from one end the two strands are separating from one end the two strands of a double stranded dna molecule is separating okay and hydrogen bond present between these two strands also broken okay so these two strands are connected by hydrogen bond you all studied okay i have given you a study so the hydrogen bond present between these two strands also broken okay hydrogen bond present between these two strands also broken so now in a single double stranded molecules one end is separated okay now these two separated strands are acting as a template strand and they are finally producing new strands okay these template strands producing new strands as i have told so what saying repeat this semi conservative replication method so in this type of replication method the this type of replication method was first explained by watson pick in the year of 1953 okay so in this type of replication method first one end is separated okay one end of the double stranded dna molecule separated and hydrogen bond present between these two strands also broken between these two strands also broken the set of you and now these two strands are acting as a template strand and these template strand are producing new strands class and my students so hope you all understood this point okay this types of replication methods okay then next class we will study about two important replications okay see the experimental uh, flow for uh, replication process okay this is very important five mark question we are going to study in the next class so today we have completed the packaging of dna and just we started the types of replication method three types of replication method conservative replication method dispersive and semi conservative method so this is very important for three mark question and packaging of dna helix is a five mark question okay in packaging of dna there is mainly one mark question is there for example the distance between two base pairs okay so and uh, uh, nucleosomes are made up of how many uh, um, proteins histone proteins like that many one mark questions are there there so today itself try to complete these two topics okay students we will meet in the next class thank you